Welcome back to Mark Strong Edits. Today, we're gonna to take a look at creating this 3D text animation using Blender. Let's check it out. All right, so we'll start off by selecting our cube and we'll hit X on the keyboard and choose delete. We'll do the same thing with the light. Now that our cube and light are deleted, we'll hit one on the number pad to go to our front view and then seven to go to our top view. And we'll hit shift A and choose text. We'll hop up into edit mode and we'll backspace this. And we're just gonna type in the letter A. So we're gonna go back into object mode under our text panel on the right. Under the alignment options, we're gonna change this from left to center. And now we're gonna rotate our letter. So with the letter selected, we'll hit R on the keyboard, and we're gonna hit X to rotate along the X axis and type 90. Now in our text menu on the right, we're gonna choose the font dropdown, and I'm gonna click the folder icon, and we're gonna find the font that we wanna choose for this animation. So for this one, I've chosen the Avengers font. So we'll go ahead and select that and choose open font. Now we'll select the geometry dropdown and we're gonna increase the extrude amount. That looks about good. With the move tool selected, we'll hit shift D on the keyboard to duplicate our letter. We'll hit one to go in the front view and we're just gonna drag this to the right. Go into edit mode and we're gonna change this letter from A to V. Go back into object mode and position it. And we're gonna do this for each individual letter. So we're gonna continue to duplicate, change it until each one of them eventually spells out Avengers. Now in the text panel on the right, we're gonna choose under the bevel dropdown, the depth, and we're gonna increase that to one and drop the resolution to zero. This will give us a nice sharp bevel on each of our letters. So we're gonna do this for each individual letter. Now we're gonna select each individual letter and we'll hold shift and press D. This will duplicate each letter and we'll drag them forward a little bit. In our text menu on the right, we're going to decrease the offset by about minus two for each individual letter. Holding shift on the keyboard, we'll select the inner text layer followed by the outer text layer and hit control P and select object. We'll want to follow this step for each individual letter. So now that we've parented all our letters, if we grab the outer layer of one of our texts and we just move our letter around, we notice the inner letter moves as well. Now we'll just drag the line down at the bottom of the screen here. This will reveal our timeline. I'll start by selecting one of the outer texts and I'm gonna enable auto king by hitting this little circle. That's gonna enable auto king. And I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard and choose lock rot. That's for location and rotation. So right now I'm adding keyframes on frame one for the current position and rotation of each individual letter. And now I'm gonna to go to about frame 70. I'll start with A and I'm going to hit R Z and minus 90. And we're gonna do this for each individual letter. We're gonna rotate them along the Z axis by minus 90 degrees. And because we have our auto keying enabled, the minute we make that rotation, we have another keyframe that automatically drops in the timeline for us. Now that our basic animation is complete, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the materials. So with our inner text selected, we'll choose our material menu on the right Select new and we'll double click the material and rename this to gold. 
And our base color, we're gonna make this kind of a yellowish orangish. And we're gonna go to our rendered view so that we can see what this will look like overall. I'm gonna create a new area light by hitting Shift A on the keyboard. And we're gonna go to light and choose area. And I'm gonna start by rotating this on the X axis in the direction of our text. Speaking of text. And uh, we're just gonna position this kind of to the center of our title. Now that we have our lighting in scene, we can work on our materials a little bit more. So I'm just going to make this a little more yellow, increase the brightness of our tone a bit. And we're gonna increase the metallic value And to make it a little more shiny, I'm gonna decrease the roughness. Now starting with the S, I'm gonna hold Shift, and I'm gonna click the S and each letter all the way down to the A. And I'm gonna hold Control and press L, and we'll choose Materials. This is gonna link the materials to all be gold. So instead of applying them individually, one click will just put them all the same. Now selecting the outer text, we're gonna to go to the materials tab and create a new material. This time we're gonna call this gray. And kind of like how we did the gold, we're gonna give this a gray look, increase the metallic value, adjust the specular and the roughness to kind of give it a good metallic-y look. We'll select all the outer text with the final text being the A. We'll hit Control L and link the materials. I think I'm just gonna make my area light a little wider. So with the scale tool, I'm just going to drag it outward along the X. So now to start building our stage a little bit, we're gonna create a new cube. So we're gonna hit Shift A and choose Mesh and Cube. And we're just gonna scale this up. We're gonna go into edit mode and we'll change it to face select mode. And we'll hit X and choose faces. And we're just gonna delete that front face. So now we'll go back into object mode and we'll position our stage evenly around our text. I'm also gonna add some adjustments to the scale of our stage as well. So now we'll create a new material and we'll call this BG box. We'll change the base color all the way to black. And we'll set the specular value to zero and the roughness to 100. So the background will be completely black. It won't be affected by any lighting. So now we'll go into the world menu on the right hand side. And we're gonna hit the circle next to color. And we're gonna choose environment texture. And we're gonna hit new. And we'll just rename this to BG and we'll hit okay. So we've just made a solid black image as our environment texture. So now I'm gonna select my area light and hit Shift D to duplicate it. And I'm gonna drag it down and rotate it along the X axis again in the direction of our text. And we're gonna choose the lighting panel on the right hand side. And we're gonna change the color to red, kind of like a red orange. And because I have auto keying on, it's adding keyframes anytime I'm making an adjustment to the light. So I'm just gonna delete these keyframes, disable auto keying, and now our light will stay put. 
I'm gonna speed this portion of the tutorial up, but I'm just adjusting the lighting, making it a little more red, adjusting the power of it and the position. So just trying to get a good, uh, a good angle of the lighting. That way we don't have too much red on the, on the text, but just enough. I'm gonna select my area light, hit I and choose location rotation. Same with the bottom light, I, location rotation. And now with both of my lights selected, I'm gonna move to about frame 70. And I'm gonna drag my lighting all the way outward. So animating the light to, to move outward is gonna cause our text to sort of fade into the shadows. So I'll hit I and choose location rotation to add a final keyframe for the lighting. So now that our Avengers animation is done, we're gonna go ahead and create a new text. So we'll hit Shift A and choose text. And we're gonna rotate it on the X axis 90 degrees. And with the move tool, we'll go ahead and bring this forward. We'll hop into edit mode. We'll clear this and type in end game. We'll go back into object mode and in our text settings on the right hand side, we're gonna go ahead and change the alignment to be center. We're gonna adjust our text position and we'll adjust the size as well. So I'm gonna scale this down just a little bit to be about the same size as Endgame, maybe a little smaller. And in the text panel on the right, we're gonna go ahead and add a font. I went ahead and just found the closest one I could find that resemble the end game font. I'm going to increase the character spacing a little bit. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a sheer to my text just to give it a slight slant. Now I'm going to increase the extrude amount under the geometry drop down. And we're going to give the text a little bit of a bevel. So I'm going to increase the bevel amount. Probably about one and we'll drop the resolution down to zero. And with the end game text selected, we'll go to the materials tab on the right. And I'm going to change this to gray. And from here, I'm just going to position the end game title to, to where around frame 70, there's a little bit more light on it, but not enough to cast any light on the Avengers text in the back. So now with the end game text selected, we're gonna hit the duplicate button in the materials panel. We're gonna duplicate our gray layer and we'll rename this to gray two. And so this is gonna allow us to do a little bit of animation with our, with our material here. So clicking and dragging in the upper left hand corner, that opens up another window. And I'm going to change this to the shader editor. We'll just move this over a little bit and we'll hit shift a on the keyboard and in the search box we'll type in mix we're going to add one mix shader and then we'll do shift a and this time we're going to add a transparent bsdf and we're going to connect the transparent to the volume of the mix shader Now in our materials panel on the right, we're gonna change the blend mode to alpha blend and we're gonna uncheck the show back face box. So adding these shaders allows us to make the text completely transparent and slowly fade in. So we can have a, a smooth transition to bring end game on the screen. So as we drag the factor slider, it will shift between invisible and visible. 
So to animate this, if we hover the mouse over the factor and hit I, we're gonna drop a keyframe there. You notice it turns yellow. Now we're gonna to move to about frame 70 and we're gonna turn this all the way down. That's gonna bring it fully visible and we'll hit I over the slider and that's gonna drop another keyframe. And then be aware the keyframes that we make for the factor don't appear in the timeline. So you won't see the little diamond that normally is created when you drop a keyframe. So just be aware. All right, so now I'm just gonna duplicate this bottom area light and we're gonna bring it up and we'll rotate it along the x-axis to where it's shining down on the text. And we're just gonna position this to be a little bit more above our text. So now I'm gonna change the color lighting in our lighting options on the right-hand panel. We hit color. I'm going to choose, I'm gonna go with a bit of a grayish color, maybe a grayish blue. And from here out, based on the way your lighting is, you might need to add a couple point lights, maybe adjust the specularity of your text. So I just made Endgame a little bit shinier, added about three point lights above it, and uh, just sort of adjusting my lights so that I get uh, kind of a good shine around the text as well. All right, so now we'll hit one to go into front view. We'll hit shift A and we're gonna create a new camera. In our camera settings on the right hand side, I'm gonna change the type from perspective to orthographic. And I'm just gonna position our camera to properly fit our text animation on the screen. And now for some finishing touches, we're gonna hit the camera icon, that's our render button on the right hand side. We're gonna enable bloom and we'll adjust the threshold a little bit for the bloom settings. And we'll enable ambient occlusion as well. And we're gonna adjust the distance on this as well. Now we're gonna set our output settings. This is for our animation is gonna be rendered. So under the output drop down, we're gonna hit the little folder and we're gonna to navigate to the folder that we wanna export our animation to. So now we wanna set our endpoint for our animation. So mine ends around frame 165. So under the frame end, we're gonna change this to 165. Obviously you wanna make sure yours matches your animation. Yours may be a little bit different than mine. But then we go to file, render, and render animation. This animation will render as an image sequence, so you'll need additional software like After Effects to put it all together. All right, and that about wraps up this tutorial today. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. If there's any other tutorials you want me to make in the future, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.